Hello, how are y'all doing? I hope you're doing good. Um, today, we are going to be working on these thorough goods. These black mock toe, I guess you call them work boots, or you can wear them as an everyday boot. They look pretty good either way. Um, but they aren't worn very much, as you can tell. So you may be wondering or asking yourself, what are we doing? These are still toe and the customer doesn't want them to be a steel toe. So we are taking the steel toe out of the boot. I've already started on this one, as you can tell. That's where this came from, is in there. So re-gluing and re-putting it back together. Unfortunately, we can't reuse the soles because you see, as we're taking it apart, it ripped. And I accounted for that and the customer and I talked. Also, the midsole rips in half. So we can't really salvage anything off the bottom as far as the sole or the midsole goes. Now the welt, which is that top piece right there. So you got the sole, you got that white midsole and then the black welt, which is has the stitching on it. That is hand sewn to the boot. Not, well, I have to hand sew it. Manufacturers stitch it on. You see you got the footbed that's the shank you have the different layers the outer leather you have a lining and the pad then you have another lining I think that is then you have this gemming which is that piece right there it stitches it sewn to the footbed and then the uppers come down and this welt gets stitched all the way around so basically, instead of having to take the whole welt off, all I did was I unstitched the very front portion of the shoe. I took the cork out, um, and that gave me access to the steel toe. Um, then, as once we get to this point right here, just re-glue the, the layers together, fold it back over, stitch the, the welt back to it, all into place. Um, put new cork in, put a new midsole and a sole. So it's a fairly simple job. It's basically like a resole, except we are taking apart this front portion here. So I know it doesn't look like a shoe, but it'll come back together. I promise. Let's get started. All right, so we heat the sole up in our heat lamp to deactivate the glue. Well, yeah, it reactivates it, but it also deactivates it to where I can take the sole off. No problem, because the sole is just glued on to the midsole. This sole, the web sole, the material it's made out of, you can't really stitch it on because it's, it's a nice, it's a, it's a cushion, it's a foam, it's a hard foam, but the stitching will actually rip through this instead of holding on to it. I time to take the midsole off. I sanded the bottom, broke the threads. That allows me to take it off. Just like that. If it doesn't rip like it did, usually it comes off in one piece. This one just wants to rip. Which is fine, it'll come off anyway. And I could take all these threads out because those stitches aren't holding on to anything anymore. And to stitch on a new midsole, we have to take them out. And they don't always come out this easily. But I'm gonna take it while I can. Basically, there's, when you stitch, the welt or the midsole on you have two threads that come together to form a lock or something so you have your top thread that goes in you have a bottom thread that goes in like this they come together and go like this and they hold tight um, and so when you sand the bottom you're basically breaking this this thread and so when you go to pull on this one this just comes out. I hope that made sense. But, like I said, usually they don't come out this easily. 
with all the cork out now, we are able to come and cut the thread that's holding the weld. So the easiest way I found to do this was just to pull the welt down and slip the blade in and cut the little threads just holding it on. And one, I gotta be careful not to cut the welt itself, but also not the shoe and just the threads. Okay, that side's free. And now it should come off fairly easily. Uh, at least that's the idea. Now that the welt is cut off, now I get to remove all the threads on the inside. You can see, well, it's kind of hard to see for you guys. I'm sorry about that. But on the inside, there's little threads. That That's what the, um, that is the stitch that held on the welt. And now not only are there threads, there's also little staples holding it on. You see that metal thing? That's a staple that the manufacturer use to hold the welt, or hold the, the shoe in place while they stitch the welts on with their sewing machine. It's like a storm welt sewing machine that stitches this on in like 10 seconds. I've seen some videos, it is pretty crazy. So I got it all unstitched, I took the staples out, all the threads are out, and you can see that black piece is that steel toe. And so I just gotta kind of peel back the layers until I can get to it because it's all glued together all right and that's that now the steel toe kind of tucks underneath this gemming so I have to break that off and break that away to get to it and then just peel the steel toe away. There's that. And then this piece, guessing it's to have a smooth transition from this blunt edge. You can see that's actually genius. Because if you had just this, the leather you would have an indention it's all glued together so you put this in here which makes it level and then this side right here is thinned out so when you have your leather that comes over it has a smooth transition so there's no ridge across the top of the toe which is pretty cool so we got it out now what now we have to glue all these layers back together, back down, and then stitch this welt back to in place. Put new cork in, midsole, sole, clean, polished condition, and we are done. So we're sewing the welt on. As you guys know and seen, like I said, if you've seen my videos, you know it's it's not a hard job. It's just kind of time consuming. You have to follow all the original holes and make sure it all stays the same shape, the same size. 
and you don't poke any more unnecessary holes in the uppers than you have to. Well, you're not poking really any holes because you're just pulling the old ones. If you poke any more holes, then you end up basically making the uppers or the welt look like a cheese grater, cheese grate it, and then the structural integrity is weakened. And I've seen shoes, many shoes that have been sent off to the manufacturer. They got new welts, but they used a machine to stitch the welt on, which when you use that machine, you can't control where the holes go, where the needle hits, you just stitch it on. And then after a couple wears, the legit, the uppers start to rip away from the sole. So I would caution against sending shoes back to the manufacturer to get fixed, depending on how they do it and what it may need. Just do your research. Sometimes, especially if it needs, if it doesn't need new welts, then I guess that's an option for you. But if it does need new welts, then I would highly, highly recommend a cobbler. You're going to spend a little bit more money in the long run versus going to a manufacturer. But this hand stitching the welt on will ensure and guarantee that you won't ruin your shoes and you'll be able to wear them for many, many years to come. So I just want to show you guys a little bit of the process. I'll talk with you guys a little bit. I know it's been a while since I've posted any long form videos like this. Um, that's just because I've been busy actually opening up a second shop in Tennessee. I currently am in Arkansas and to explain the whole situation would take a very long time. So maybe I'll do it another night, another video, but yeah, we are actually now open. If you are in the Smyrna area, which for those of you that aren't, don't live in Tennessee, it's about 20 minutes south of Nashville. You can come check us out in person, bring your shoes, or if you just want to chat, I'll be there, me and my wife. And then my wife, she also, does she runs our laser engraving and embroidery portion of our business so if she need anything embroidered or laser engraved she is wonderful at it she's also a graphic designer so if you don't really know exactly what you want or if you have a picture that you would like embroidered then she can do that i'll include uh, our website in the description of the video and an email to email us if you have any questions. She can do mail-in orders and requests. So whether you need your shoes fixed or anything like that, you can contact me through that email. Or if you wanted some laser engraving or embroidery, we also can work that out with you where, or you can work that out with my wife. She go over she goes over the design with you and pretty much every step of the process and then once it's all done you know get it shipped to you and everything should be good so that is what i've been doing the last it's been three months yeah i started three months ago and it's been a crazy three months I can't even explain to you what I've had to do, what I've been through, and I couldn't do it. I wouldn't have been able to do it if it wasn't for my wife, for my family, and definitely, definitely God. God had a really big role in it because I didn't think it was possible. I was like, um, this would be nice. However, I don't see it happening. So, if God wants it to happen, I told him, I was like, you're going to make it happen, you're going to make a way, and he's made a way, and it's happening, so, it is what it is, I'm going with it, I'm rolling with it, I'm very happy and very excited to see what the future holds. I'm actually planning 
on doing a little shop tour of the Tennessee location. So that will be a cool video coming up so you guys can kind of see the shop, see all the tools, all the machine, the cool machines we have and what they do and how they work. And you get to see, I guess, the inside look of a shoe repair shop from a cobbler's perspective. Alrighty, well, I've talked a lot and I'm probably boring you. So I'm gonna skip to where um, the next step after stitching this on, um, I'm going to fill the cavity with some cork and then we get to glue the new midsole on because basically the hard part of this job is over. Taking apart the upper or the lower, I guess you call that the uppers. Taking apart the shoe and taking the steel toe out. That's the hard part. Now it's just pretty much a simple resole. New soles, new mid, new mid soles, new soles. So, um, alrighty. See you guys in a little bit. Alrighty, we got the welt stitched back on, cork in the shoe. We are now ready for our midsole. And we're replacing it with the same midsole so it looks the same. Just press down the edges. And then just hammer it on. We got the midsole stitched on with white thread just like the original. We got our Vibram wedge soles. Very similar to the Thoroughgood ones, just made from made by Vibram. I personally like Vibram better. Some people say that Thoroughgood soles last longer. I don't necessarily know that that's the truth. I don't know if Vibram is the truth, but this is what I had on hand and to get Thoroughgood soles was going to be too difficult, so we just went with the black Vibram. Now all that's left is to press it, trim it, sand it, put a coat of conditioning, conditioners on it, and we are good to go. Alrighty, yo, we are done with this project. I mean, I'll show you, there's really not much to see. It's different from the outside. We replaced that white midsole, the black Vibram soles is the only difference. I guess you can tell from the outside, just those are the Thoroughgood, Vibram, same thing, um, just different company. And here's those steel toe. It's crazy. I've never actually, this is my first time doing this type of job, so I've never seen a steel toe, never taken it out. I just know how it's, how it was supposed to be done and how to do it. And I was like, yeah, I can do it. So there's that. And the customer knew that we had to replace the soles. And to be honest with you, if you didn't tell anybody that these were taken apart, I don't think you would tell. Stitching on the welt, when we restitched all that, that, that white, when we took all that out and restitched it, I'm pretty sure, I mean, look, let me double check, but I think I got all the original holes. That one is good. And that one is good. So yeah, that's the goal, trying to make it look like it was never taken apart. Um, I mean, there's not really much else to say. So yeah, that's how we take out the steel toe from the boots. And just so you guys know, if you're curious, this was about a $170 job, plus shipping back to the customer because he lives out of state. Um, if you guys would like to get this done, 
this was the first time I did this, so I didn't think it was going to be this much work, but it was a little bit extra work. Um, it's going to be a minimum of $200 for the new soles, bid soles, and to take the, the steel toe out. Um, it really depends on the shoe, too, so it could go up, but minimum of $200 if you guys are interested. Um, you can contact me via Instagram. I will link my Instagram below. Also, I'll put my email down below if you want to just email me. That works as well. It's the same person, same thing. So, thank you guys for watching. Also, follow me on Instagram so you can keep up with all that stuff. I know I've been kind of slacking off with the videos lately, and I do apologize. As you guys know, in the beginning of the video, I said I've been opening up a second shop in Smyrna, Tennessee, which is 20 minutes south of Nashville. So if you guys are in the area and you want to check me out, I will also link, also not link, I'll put my address down below so you can come check us out. Um, that's pretty much it. These turned out pretty cool. It was a fun little project. And on to the next one. Thank you for watching. God bless.